welcome to my woefully inadequate workshop. Uh, I thought I'd do a quick video on contouring and shaping uh, wings. Uh, in this case we've got a 2 meter panel from a Simprop Solution uh, kit from the early 90s. And unfortunately, whilst built as uh, pressure molded in moulds, it's a foam veneered wing with a nice um, up, up swept wing tip and so on and so forth. After what are we now? We are now August 2015. Um, after nearly 15 years in bad storage, I in my attic. Um, it was quite warped and twisted, so I had to do quite a bit to uh, to get it back into into shape. Uh, so I just wanted to discuss a few techniques after the fact because I've done most of the work now. It's just ready for some filling and then covering uh, and and painting. So uh, this first shot is just a scale, and I'll focus in uh, to get a bit more detail. The problem with this wing, or these wing panels, is that they did not come in uh, foam cores or beds like uh, old fa older kits do, or did, should I say, uh, because they were pressure molded in a mold to get the fancy upswept uh, wing tip. So uh, I just cut my own out of the cheapest foam I could find, which is why you've got grey dots from the builder's yards. Uh, I determined through tracing the root uh, section that it's, a, I think, an HQ11 with one point five percent camber so I made my own beds um, because they did not have beds uh, in storage or even in the box when it was bought the problem I had was that the ailerons were very very badly distorted so I just cut them up cut them out and replaced them with solid stock uh, balsa uh, this is two sheets of six millimeter epoxy together this was a blank for the flap but I decided that um, the flap was good enough, the flaps were good enough not to bother, but the, the ailerons were curled beyond recognition. Uh, and you'll see the photographs in, in the building thread, uh, the link of, of which is in the description for this video. Uh, the problem is, with these things, is that there's a, a balsa subspar at the hinge, which is routed out underneath with a, a V cutter, and the spar is thicker than the foam, and when it all gets pressed, yeah, the foam gets crushed more in the balsa, and one thing or another, we ended up with a dreadful situation. Um, so I decided to just cut it all out. So I did that by replacing, by gluing this stock in, and then, fortunately, at the end of the aileron, before the flap starts, and also at the wing tip, the the spar stops, therefore there's no deformity, so you can use this as a good guide with which to shape the solid stock. And uh, remember the HQ's got an undercusp underneath and I'll deal that with that soon. So you need a solid, a straight, a straight sanding block. I made, I got mine, it's uh, aluminium tubing, uh, two inches by two inches and one inch, uh, one eighth thick. That's five centimeters by five centimeters and three millimeters thick. Tape to slide over the veneer at the ends, at the guides, yes. This is 80 grit on this side and 180 grit on the other. And uh, what I did is I, I stuck it in, centered, razor planed it, took the bulk of the bolts off with a razor plane, then with a sanding bar, a small one, 80 grit, I got it nearly there. And then finally, when I was within a half a millimeter or so, I laid this on it, like that, and very gently sanded it, not lengthways like that, or that way, but at 45 degrees, as you, you know, it's called crosshatch, and I learned this just by reading forums on full-size aircraft, uh, such as the Burt Root and Quickie and uh, the Easy families and all that lot. Uh, so yeah, for 45 degrees and 45 degrees like this. And this is to avoid flat spots and to uh, reduce the introduction of any biases that you might have. <coughs> this was easy because it's flat. Uh, the challenge came on the other side because it's under camber, it's got a little cusp. So there's a bit more of a challenge. But I've thought it through over many nights, and this is what I did. 
I'll turn this over. Can we see the tip? Yeah. So what we've got here is the underside which is under cambered but right here you had not a correct profile I don't think because the whole wing was a bit suspect but uh, a reasonable guide and the same here because there's no spar so again long sanding block I contacted Permagrit and bought off them their extrusion which is concave on one side and uh, sorry convex on one side and concave on the other and attached 80 grit, this is the 180, so I went first with the 80 again tape on the sides on the ends should I say and, and I didn't do this and I didn't do that, I did a combination of the two 45 degrees like this and then the other way like that and with patience I got it down absolutely perfectly it's hard to, you'll see the photographs on the thread on RCU, the link of which is provided in the description but I've got a beautiful undercusp here as you'd expect from an HQ section and the trailing edge is 1 16th or 3 millimeters all the way and uh, so yes so that was my biggest nightmare when I was deciding whether or not to cut out the ailerons whether I would be able to do a good enough job and yes this balsa aileron is far better than the original strip I cut out so I'm pleased with that Anyway, so that's that. Now the question is, what about the rest of the airfoil? Veneer, even though the marketing says yes, perfect wings, you know, pressed in the mould, blah blah blah, under high pressure, this veneer has a lot of waviness. It's very, its thickness is not consistent, and this manifests itself on the surface. If I, if a lot of people just snap on white film and go flying, but I'm a bit too much of a perfectionist and I wanted to paint this model and I knew just by running my hand on it that the surface was, was quite uneven uh, plus combined with the fact that the pressure of the moulds introduces all sorts of stresses which after 15 years manifest themselves so I block sanded the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole panel, or both panels actually and uh, there's a technique to avoid flat spots, you know, the, national, the natural inclination is to do this in a shoe polishing motion or the other way or whatever, but that runs the risk of introducing flat, flat spots and biases. So according to the full size guys and the car building industry, there's a lot, a lot to be learnt on the, you know, the panel beating and um, car finishing videos on YouTube. Here's a cross hatch, me cross hatch method which effectively means an X yes so this is how it's done run it mainly it's more important to get it parallel to the leading edge once you get the trailing edge it's not that important although I do prefer to try and get it aligned up because the trailing edge is pretty much flat yeah so here we go it's um, like this gently all the way you know 45 degrees and then the other way now this is nearly finished so I'm only doing 180 grit but I started with <coughs> 80 grit and I went over uh, three, yeah, three times one way and back and three times the other way and back so once 45 degrees this way, then stroke 45 degrees that way, and then again both ways three times, and that got pretty much everything off. There's a bit of a shine here, there's a servo well, there'll be hardly any filler there, and on the other flap servo well as well, and there's pretty much taken a few microns off and made this beautifully, beautifully uniform. And the leading edge, the same. You can't, well you, no, you can't, you can, you mustn't, you shouldn't, just go hell for leather like this. I using Profili 
created a, a number of templates, leading edge templates, to give me an idea of where I was at. And the mo motion is the same. Once you get it roughly in, in place, I'll come here, I think. It's 45 degrees, like that. And advance about an inch with every stroke. And then you get it beautifully round and straight. Straighter, and then the other way, the X in the opposite way. Patience. Patience, patience. By the way, that the leading edge is very hard to do with a conventional flat uh, sanding bar. So it's nice to have this grip, which allows you to use your wrist to the maximum efficiency uh, over the leading edge. Um, if you don't have one of these, these are the these are Hobby King Smooth Touch, and I forgot. The same applies for the underside. So again, cross hatch. The problem you've got with the underside with an under under cambered trailing edge is that when you are sanding into this, you now hit with the edge with the hard edge of the uh, of the sanding block or bar into the under camber there, which is not something you want. So I would go up to the hinge line where the transition starts rough, rough, roughly about there and I would do it in two parts. So I do this, yeah, that kind of thing and then go back to my convex bar and and do the under camber separately, gently like that, and so on and so forth. And then what I did, because I want to cover this in, finish this in Minwax polyacrylic, or any other kind of uh, acrylic floor, water-based floor varnish, I've, I've had it happen to me in the past where you paint something, a thin trailing edge with water-based floor varnish, and it just curls up. So I coated the trailing edges with epoxy, which is why you've got a a two inch thick dark band at the trailing edge and then I did the rest with acrylic because uh, the foam core is not going to it's not going to um, curl but here it was epoxy and finally well you know I've got this tool here which is effectively an extrusion I bought at the the uh, what's it called hardware store these things are for bridging gaps between two floors um, and that's it, it's about a yard long and I cut into sections to make myself little convex uh, sanding bars and this is again just to do the fine detail yeah 45 degrees yeah and I did that mainly to prepare the edges underneath just to get the, uh, the hard spots of epoxy off um, and there, and there you are, that's it. So the other side, because I've got an under camber here, I needed to do two parts to avoid the edge of the the sanding bar digging into my under camber uh, aileron. The challenge with the wingtip is that it is um, swept up and back, so you know you can't you can't use a, a bar because, well, for obvious reasons really. In this case, what has worked well for me is a dense foam uh, pad. It's, it, it's not, it is quite dense, it's hard to, but um, and, uh, and just it's all about the pattern to avoid you know, if you do this you're going to get a channel. Uh, so again, this cross hatching, the same applies. Yeah, 45 degrees, like that. Then no biases. You both planes at once. The X and the Y plane at once, and then the other way. <clears throat> and uh, this this is six inch uh, six six. Um, six millimeters, one quarter inch. I had serious delamination here, so I had to cut out the veneer and inlet the, uh, the balsa wood 
and despite it being softer than the hard obishi, you still get a good profile by doing that. And that's a perfect, perfect repair. Um, another little trick. <coughs> One problem I found with using blocks is that a block, you always have a bias, you know, you tend to... So I made myself little round sanding blocks like this, which do not have a bias at all. So I don't have to worry about, you know, whether I'm doing this or I'm doing that or whatever. So for the leaning edge of the um, wing tip, which as you can see has got a, a very pronounced sweep. Just let me clear my desk before I not start knocking things over. Then this is just MDF with three millimeters or one eighth, one eighth of a of an inch uh, foam from the craft supply self adhesive and uh, sandpaper on top of that. The foam is just to make the surface a bit forgiving because after all you are dealing with with curves. And then, oh, sorry about the lighting, uh, there we are. Then, because I'm not trying to orient the, the block in any way, I can easily do that. And when it comes to cross hatching the leading edge, yeah, 45 degrees. There you are. So this prevents any tendency to point the the block in any given direction and it makes things a lot easier for small awkward awkward situations. Uh, and it's any any leading edge, uh, sorry, wing tip or anything, these things are really really quite cool. And finally, even blocks are not suitable for some situations and on this case it is very hard to actually sand the edge with a block so you'll have to resort to the old-fashioned method of folding sandpaper and using your hand or even better I think is using one of these uh, finishing pads that you get at the at the store at the home improvement store and uh, for a final detail that's the way it's going to have to be. Blocks are all very well, but sometimes that or that is better.